you always read about it. The plumber with the 12 children who wins the Irish sweepstakes from toilets to riches. That story. Or the nursemaid, some luscious sweet from Denmark, who captures the oldest son's heart from diapers to Dior. That story. Or the milkman, who serves the wealthy eggs, cream, butter, yogurt, and milk, who goes into real estate and makes a pile from homogenized to martinis at lunch. Or the charwoman, who is on the bus when it cracks up and collects enough from the insurance, from mops to bomb teller. That story. Once, the wife of a rich man was on her deathbed, and she said to her daughter Cinderella, Be devout. <coughs> Be good. And I'll smile down from heaven in the scene of a cloud. The man took another wife, who had two daughters. Pretty enough, but with hearts like blackjacks. Cinderella was their maid. She slept on the sooty hearth each night, and walked around looking like Al Jolson. Her father brought presents home from town. Jewels and gowns for the other women, but the twig of a tree for Cinderella. Cinderella planted that twig on her mother's grave and grew to the tree where a white dove sat. Whenever she wished for anything, the dove would drop it like an egg upon the ground. The bird was important, my dears, so heed him. Next came the ball, as you all know. It was a marriage market. The prince was looking for a wife. All but Cinderella were preparing and gussying up for the big event. Cinderella begged to go, too. So her stepmother threw a dish of lunches into the cinders and said, Pick them up in an hour and you shall go. <coughs> the white dove brought all of his friends, all the warm wings of the fatherland him, and picked up the lunches in a jiffy. <coughs> no, Cinderella said the stepmother. You have no clothes and, and you cannot dance. <coughs> That's the way with stepmothers. Cinderella went to the tree at the grave and cried forth like a gospel singer. Mama! Mama! My turtle dove! Send me to the prince's ball! The white dove dropped a golden dress and delicate little gold slippers. So she went. Which is no surprise. Her stepmother and sisters didn't even recognize her without her cindered face and the prince took her hand on the spot and danced with no other the whole day. As nightfall came, Cinderella <coughs> thought that she better get home. The prince walked her home, and she disappeared into the pigeon house. But although he took an axe and broke it open, she was gone, back to her cinders. These events repeated themselves for three days. However, on the third day, the prince covered the palace steps in cobbler's wax, and Cinderella's gold shoe stuck upon it. Now he would find her mystery fit and his strange dancing girl for keeps. The prince went to their house, and the two sisters were delighted because they had lovely feet. The eldest went into her room to try on the slipper, but her big toe got in the way, so she simply <coughs> sliced it off. <coughs> the prince rode away with her until the white dove told him to look at the blood pouring forth. That's the way with the educations. They don't just heal up like a wish. The other sister chopped off her heel. But the blood told his blood will. The prince was getting tired, and he began to feel like a shoe salesman. But he gave it one last try. Cinderella fit into his slipper like a love letter into his envelope. At the wedding ceremony, the two sisters came to curry a favor, and the white dove packed their eyes out. Two hollow spots were left like soup spoons. Cinderella and the prince lived, they say, happily ever after. Like two dogs in a museum case, never bothered by diapers of dust, never arguing over the timing of an egg, never telling the same story twice. Their darling smiles pasted on for eternity. Regular Bobsy twins. That story.